Hey everybody, Daryl here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. Today we are starting on Hijikata Toshizo's route. And I don't know if he's going to have more material in the first game than everybody else, like he did in the main game. Or if it's just going to be about the same amount of material as it was since it's breaking in the middle anyway. Because most of his extra story was, you know, because he lived longer than everybody else. <laughs> So let's journey into it and venture forward and see. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. And of course, we're going to get to make all those choices we didn't get to make before. All kinds of new choices. But first couple are going to be the same stuff. So find a way to escape. And run for it. Stay put. And I could see that. I think it's pretty obvious, actually, that Hijikata is actually caring, but, you know... In the tough kind of way. That didn't seem right. But then again, I told myself Kondo knows him much better than I do. He may be a little strict with you, but only because he has your best interest at heart. I guess that to be the case. If the commander doesn't think it's time for me to leave yet, then I trust him. I'm sure you all know what's out there better than I do. I hadn't spent much time with him, but it was obvious that Hijikata was no fool. He was intimidating, of course but he was a man of good intentions. I'll speak with Toshi. You're bored, I know, but I have to ask you to hang on a bit. All right, thank you. And for once, ask Hijikata if I can help around the compound. Finally, we get to make that choice. I didn't get many chances to see Hijikata, so I took the opportunity to offer my aid to the house. Um, I actually have a favor to ask of you, Hijikata. Staying in my room for long periods alone makes me feel terribly useless. Would you please give me something to do? I'll do anything. Cleaning, laundry, anything. Hijikata sensed the sincerity of my plea, and it appeared as though he actually considered it. Do you really find yourself incapable of occupying your time in your room productively? Well, if you don't give me anything. Well, um, a little. Fine. I shall discuss with Gen. So until further notice, stand by for your orders. Really? This is under the condition that you're to keep from interacting with outsiders. Understand? Understood. But thank you so much. Is this the beginning of my tea-making career? The next day, Inouye informed me that I was given more freedom within the headquarters, which allowed me to exit my room freely. My duties included cleaning, laundry, and cooking. Not the most glamorous of chores, of course. However, it gave me an opportunity to occupy myself, as opposed to going stir-crazy in my room. And I shall accompany Hijikata as his page, whether he likes it or not. Explain the situation. Remain in the compound. Inquire, why me? Yamazaki, you should go. I don't know why we have to choose that so often. Of course, I'm staying with Hijikata. That just makes sense. Oh, I'm so sorry for not remembering you, Iba. <laughs> Poor guy. This time I went to come. Again to Mount Tenno. And stop Nakakura. Don't interfere, man. And again I hold my place. I guess we don't get to keep running ever. Oh, we actually have some new text this time. Uh, I commend your courage, kid. Huh, that Kodachi. Oh, it was just one different sentence. Why did I stop for that? Actually, I thought I remember hearing him say that before. Maybe it was in the, the other route when we met him in the Ikeda Inn. This time, I stepped out of line. Now I return to my room like a good girl. Remain... Oh, remain in the common room. That's something new. Saito, Harada, and Nagakura had respectively left for the locations at the bequest of Hijikata's command, which meant I was alone with Hijikata. Ah, just where I wanted to be. Ah. <sighs> Maybe it was because Hijikata remained silent, but the mood in the common room felt suffocating. Of course, I bore him no ill will, but we were left to contemplate a somber silence together. My eyes slowly drifted to Hijikata, and his brows furrowed into deep indents above drooping eyes. One could see that his heavy concern for Sanin was draining him, 
and it was only after he closed his eyes to breathe that he quietly spoke. You may think you know Sonnen, but this commotion has distorted him greatly. Sonnen is not only intelligent, but he possesses a strong hand for the blade. His mind sees the whole picture, not just what stands before him. He knew how to offer perspective in moments where my temper would get the best of me, and he could control me with just his words. Without him, the Shinsengumi would be nothing. We would cease to exist. Oh, So he actually used to be the, the voice of reason around here. To me, he was like my big brother. Hijikata's sincerity dripped from his curt words, and he balled his hands into tight fists. Sana must have a very special place in your heart. Well, it suddenly sounded so cheap when put to words. Where he sat, captured by thoughts of a life without his old friend, the truth could be devastating even for Hijikata. His position, however, prevented him from revealing this to the others, and by sharing these memories with me, he and the truth could wait. The only reason we didn't dispose of that crap was because I thought he could heal his arm with it. We knew this could happen. We need Sonnen. We can't lose him. He scrunched his face heavily, and his usual coldness was dissolving, replaced by an anguish as he considered the mortality of his dear friend. He's completely spent. It'll be okay. Comfort him. It'll be okay. Do you have anything to back that up? Yes, I do. Back in Edo, I saw my father treat patients. I'm going to base my judgment on that. Sanem will pull through. There's a saying that illness comes from the heart, so it's important to have a strong heart. If everyone believes from the bottom of their hearts that Sanem will recover, then... Hijikata's eyes thinned a little. Thanks. Huh. <laughs> Why is the commander of the Shinsengumi being cheered up by some young girl? The fire in his eyes returned. Still, you're right. Son drank the medicine with the hopes of fixing his arm. We just have to believe that he'll recover. Hope and pray. And so, the long night broke. The captains of the Shinsengumi gathered in the common room. Oh, okay, everyone, don't worry. The hardest part for him is over. The room collectively breathed a sigh of relief. So, how is Sonnen? He's still asleep. He looks pretty peaceful. So, has Sonnen gone crazy like the others? Inoue simply shook his head. We won't know for sure until he wakes up. For now, he looks just like he always has. Suddenly then, the door slid open. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Oh, darn it. I should have been forwarding. I don't know how long I could have been forwarding. Oh, well. And this time I'm staying. And reaching for my sword. But I'm going to refrain from drawing it. I put my faith in Hijikata and let go of my sword. Okay, good. Don't be a fool and draw your sword. You leave this to me. You mistake me for a weakling like you. I give you the honor of fighting me and you chatter. Very well, then. Oh, shoot, and skipping. Once again, yes, please. And we're back to Okita not being our business again. Most concerned about the demons? And I believe this is a Zusoroku scene, August 1865. August 1865. It was my second summer since coming to Kyoto. Last year our hands were full between the Battle of Ikeda Inn and the Hamagoda Rebellion. This year, however, was much quieter. Thanks in part to the relative peace, I've been busy searching for clues about my father on rounds, and I was able to help around the headquarters. <sighs> but today the air was so humid I couldn't sleep. Maybe I'll go outside. Some fresh air might help. After I learned of the existence of Furies, I've been giving something much closer to free reign. My connection to Dr. Matsumoto had probably also worked in my favor. 
I shouldn't get in too much trouble for taking a little walk at night, right? As long as you don't leave the compound. I slipped out of bed and tiptoed out of my room. Ah. <sighs> the air outside was much easier to breathe. I was starting to think I might take a short walk around the compound when... Huh? It was the middle of the night, but I could see a figure standing in the inner courtyard. Was something wrong? Did something happen? I frowned on myself and inched toward the figure. Uh... As I got closer, I could see that the lone figure was... Hijikata. He was standing almost completely still, the silvery moonlight shining down on him. He possessed an air of melancholy, standing there as if he was waiting for someone. I thought to myself that I should walk on, pretending that I didn't see anything. Good evening, Hijikata. My apologies for calling you out here so late. Nothing to apologize for. I ask you to come here. Can't really talk during the day. I lost my opportunity to say something, and I stood there confused. How are you doing? Don't lie to me on the sonin. <laughs> well, the sun is down, so I'm feeling all right. If I have any complaints, they would be about this wretched heat and this intolerable humidity. They didn't seem to notice me. If I tried to leave, I was sure I'd make some kind of noise and they'd catch me. I decided to just keep quiet. I know you don't like the sun, and nobody likes this heat. But, you know what I'm getting at, Sonnen. Are you... You want to see if I've gone mad, correct? <sighs> if your heart aches for me because of what I've become, perhaps this can serve as a balm. I do not regret drinking the water of life. Indeed, I am quite pleased with the results. My arm can carry a sword again, something I never thought would happen again. But Sanin's smile didn't seem to be what Hijikata wanted, and he frowned. Yeah, you heal up real good, but at what cost? When you become a fury, a part of you goes away. Maybe even too much. This isn't something we should be taking lightly. You worry way too much, Hijikata. Look at the bigger picture. We've been given a gift. A miracle, even. One man's miracle is another man's curse. I don't like this. Hijikata scowled. Oh ho, how scary. I'd be a fool to disregard one of your hunches. You'd be a fool to joke about this. I'm being serious. Sanin just shrugged. I want you to be up there with Kondo. You're a colonel. You should be one of the faces of the Shinsengumi. This behavior is so unlike you. Are you sure you're all right? Then suddenly he looked up. I had no time to hide, and he looked right at me. Uh? Chizuru. Hijikata turned toward me, surprised. There was no point in running, so I just looked at the ground and tried to be as small as possible. Oh, I'd have thought they'd have noticed I was here before. I'm sorry. I wasn't sure what to say, and then you were talking, and... <sighs> really, Hijikata? You have much more important things to worry about than me. What about Ito and his followers, for instance? I ah, hear he's been acting suspicious. Yeah, I'll handle him. That's my job as commander. Sanin's eyes thinned with satisfaction. Then he nodded slightly to me before taking his leave. Um... I contemplated whether or not to return to my room, but... Yukimura, you haven't been dismissed yet. Uh, okay. I froze. You're not an idiot. Probably shouldn't act like one. The more you know, the more danger you put yourself in. You've seen how easy it is to die around here. Do you understand me? Sorry. Don't be sorry. Be careful. Stay out of trouble. Easier said than done. Trouble just finds me. He sighed and rubbed his temple with a tired hand. When it seemed like he had nothing more to say, Hijikata turned and began to walk off. Uh, um, Hijikata? I was surprised to hear myself speak, but the way he looked so lonely, I felt like I had to say something. So, I'll help with the research. C can can I help with the fury research? What the hell? No, of course not. I, I know I don't have my father's knowledge or expertise or, well, anything really, but... I knew it was pointless, 
but I felt responsible, like my father's duties were passed down to me. But I didn't know anything about medicine, and even less about whatever it was that created furies. It was maddening. I can read his notes, though, and help explain them to other people. He left a lot of his research at our house back in Edo. There's got to be something there. Maybe I can find something that'll help them, or... Calm down, Yukimura. Kodo continued his research when he was here. Get it? Even if we went back to our house to dig through his stuff, the chances that something there will tell us stuff we don't already know is slim to none. But, but, I could do my own research, or... You're not thinking this through. If things go bad, could you accept responsibility for that? Well, I... He looked at me and sighed. Look, Kodo's probably one of the top doctors of Western medicine in the country, and he couldn't figure this out. A kid who can barely tell her ass from her elbow isn't going to do any better. <sighs> he was right, of course, about all of it. You don't know that. What if I'm some kind of child prodigy? I felt stupid to think for a moment that I may be able to solve something my father had failed to. Sorry. I tried to look as contrite as possible. Hijikata's mouth twisted. You want to help. That's what matters. I won't forget it. Huh? But right now you have to wait. The Shinsengumi made this problem, and that means we have to find a solution to it. Even if he was cold, he did care. I think I get it. Your dad was part of the Fury research, and now you feel responsible. That sound right? I nodded. We're still looking for Kodo. Either the watch will come up with something, or they won't. You'll just have to wait. What I'm saying is you're being a kid. Leave this to the adults. <sighs> I kept my mouth shut, though, and he frowned. We all know the Furies are bad news. In a perfect world, we just leave it well enough alone. But it's far from perfect, and the hard truth is they might be our only advantage. You mean... Only a last resort, though. The cost's too high. Hijikata's face scrunched in an unpleasant manner. Never mind. This is just between us. You tell anyone and we have a little talk. Clear? I'd heard the same warning many times before. I nodded. Good. Go back to your room. Don't get caught. R right And the next time you take a walk, think about where people might be and go the other way. I'll be careful, but you guys shouldn't be meeting out in the open like this. You should have picked a more private place. I turned and headed back toward my room at a pace that was nearly a run. Hijikata had certainly earned his reputation, and he reminded me why every time I saw him. But there was more to him than that. His cold, severe mask had more empathy than people realized. Or maybe they did. A man didn't earn that much respect through discipline alone. I slowed to a walk and let the night wind brush against my face as I thought about Hijikata and the kind of man he was. A wonderful, wonderful man. And gorgeous to boot. This time, I am worried about the notice board. And I feel rather perplexed. To be honest... I wasn't quite sure what to feel. I hadn't gotten in Harada's way, of course. There was no way I could have. But I felt bad. Someone who looked just like me made things more difficult for the Shinsengumi. I didn't know who she was, but... Our shared appearance made me feel... responsible somehow. Who was this strange girl? You worried about what Sana said? Oh, um... Yes, I am. I was wondering how someone could look just like me. Maybe you got possessed. Whenever you're sleeping, a restless spirit takes over your body, and you wander the streets of Kyoto, totally oblivious. Do you really think that's what's happened? Maybe he was right. Maybe I was the culprit. Oh man, I'm just joking, kid. Good lord. Could you not be so gullible? It gets boring if you fall for it every time. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Wait, why am I apologizing? Anyways, do you remember that one time? You remember that girl we met outside on patrol with Heisuke? The one who looked just like you? Oh, of course. 
The girl to whom Okita said I bore a striking resemblance. I'd almost forgotten about her. Her name was... Kaoru. Do you think she was the one who kept Tarada from capturing the Tosa men? Well, do you think there are that many girls in Kyoto that look just like you? Well, no, but... But she was just a normal girl. She didn't look like the kind of person who would try to sabotage the Shinsengumi. Well, so now you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, there isn't a person in Kyoto who doesn't know what that board represents. There was no doubt in his voice. So, so what, what would you do if the girl was the same one who Tarada saw? Oh, you already know the answer to that, don't you? I'd kill her, of course. She might be a girl, but an enemy's an enemy. <laughs> he was right. I had known he would choose to kill her, but to actually hear the cold finality of his words... I couldn't just pretend I was okay with it today. Um, I... I need to go use the, um, facilities... I just couldn't bear to stay in that room any longer. Were the girl we'd seen and the one who interrupted Harada one and the same? If she was interfering with the Shinsengumi on purpose, did that mean that she was an imperialist? Or was she simply doing it for her own enjoyment? After all, there wasn't a person in Kyoto who didn't know the name of the Shinsengumi. She had to know what would happen to her if she challenged him. There you are. I'd wondered where you'd gone off to. Something wrong? The food not your thing? No, no, it's wonderful. The food, I mean. It's... it's something else. You're worried about the girl Harada saw. I mean, the girl that got in the way wasn't necessarily an acquaintance, right? Oh, well, yes, of course not. There was no hiding my thoughts from him. There was no hiding my thoughts from him, it seemed. Don't worry about it, all right? It's our business. Or was Soji messing around with you again, trying to shake you up? Isn't he always? Um... I guess my face must have said it all, since Hijikata looked like he understood immediately. <laughs> Seriously, that fool never quits with his tasteless jokes. I always tell him to knock it off because it's a bad influence on our new members. Oh, but those are the ones he enjoys playing with the most. Without a word, he moved over next to me and... Huh. And looked beautiful. Sat down. I could feel the warm breeze drifting in through the open window. Alright, now it's time for the real party to start. You ready, Sanu? We want to see it. Now you're talking. Can't have a party without Sanu's unique performance. Well, I guess I don't have a choice then, do I? How could I say no to you guys anyway? What a guy! Can't you just give us a brush and some ink, ma'am? Their voices echoed out from the other room, drifting through the warm air. The look on Hijikata's face was one I'd never seen before. Man, they never change. Um, I'm sorry? We used to run this poor sword school back in Edo. We drink like this every time we get paid. This just reminds me of that. There were many who wanted to know how to swing a sword in case of war or something, but no one wanted to learn from a bunch of country hicks. We barely had any money to run the dojo. A roof sprung on every rainy day, and the windows couldn't stand against a damn breeze. I remember thinking, we're not going to give up now. Someday we're going to put Kondo on the map. <sighs> hmm? Something up? Uh... You can't imagine that we went through times like that? Oh, well, um, yes. When I met him, Hijikata was already the commander of the Shinsengumi. So, I couldn't even imagine in my dreams that they had such a rough start. You're so honest. I still think about it every so often. It wasn't so long ago I was just a street merchant, selling my family's medicine. Now I wear swords and work for the Shogun. Sometimes... I wonder if this is just a long dream, and eventually I'm going to have to wake up. The moon rose outside our window, and as he looked up, its light washed over his face, the cool glow playing across his handsome features. Just like Kimikiko had said, he was as good-looking as an actor. After her, though, a girl like myself had to seem awfully plain, especially next to a man as beautiful as he. Indeed. 
Oh, I can't take it. Stop it, Sanu. I'm laughing so hard I can't breathe. Come on, you're an idiot. You were the idiot who got me up here in the first place. Now you want me to stop right in the middle of it? You're the greatest, Sano. One more time. <laughs> I love those three. The party lasted until morning. There was the Fury Corps to worry about, and now a girl who looked just like me. It was a lot to think about, but it was hard to feel down when everyone around me was having such a great time. A well, brief reprieve is good. Actually, this might be a short start to Hijikata's route, but I'm going to stop the video there because we're going to end up with a... Because if we add another scene to this, then it's going to be kind of long. So I'm going to stop right there. We'll pick up continuing his route on the next episode tomorrow. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other episodes. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.